my name is Diogo Reze, as Matt already announced, I'll be your host for today. And I'm a solution architect and testing advocate for TestRail. And what's a TestRail CLI? Well, the TestRail CLI is a standalone command line interface. So this is a text-based interface uh, for users, like you can interact, for instance, with your operating system. You can also interact with the CLI. And it's an open source project. This means that everyone is welcome to contribute. Everyone is able to download the code and customize it for yourselves if you wish to. And what can you do with the CLI? Well, you can use a JUnit style report to upload test automation results to TestRail and optionally automatically generate the test cases as well. And these results can be generated, this sort of report, I mean, can be generated from automation frameworks such as JUnit, TestNG, Cypress, Playwright, Mocha, Robot Framework, PyTest, and Unit. It's a very common format, so usually all the latest frameworks support this in some way, or there are workarounds you can use. Uh, we'll also have a, a bunch of articles um, on how to actually integrate all of these frameworks with the, with the CLI, with TestRail through the CLI. Uh, so be on the lookout for those as well. And what does that mean for TestRail customers? So what, what does this mean? This means you can save time because the CLI abstracts the TestRail API, so you don't have to deal with the complexity of the API and with getting to know the API, going around things like rate limits, et cetera. Uh, it reduces maintenance effort because, well, there's a, a community using this, so we'll be granting some sort of support. And with this too, you'll be able to uh, use your, your save time to actually increase the focus on your test automation. And this also means that you unite automated and manual testing in one place. This is testing results. So you can track your test progress, you can measure your quality metrics all in one place, generate all sorts of reports that TestRail allows you to, and leverage all, all the, the TestRail functionality. And ultimately, what you're doing is increasing visibility, traceability, and coverage across your organization. So who is the TestRail CLI for? It's for managers of teams that run test automation, for test automation engineers and software development engineers in test, and overall, all, all TestRail customers, which include professional and enterprise customers and cloud and server customers as well. And why did we create a CLI? Why is it a CLI? So this is a, a layer of abstraction on top of the TestRail API. So once again, you don't have to deal with all the complexity. It allows you to, to import things in a clear way. And it's, a, it's something that it's quick and easy to set up and it's that test framework agnostic. This means that you just need a J, as long as you have a JUnit report, it, which can be generated by a lot of frameworks like we, we just mentioned, then you're, you're all good to import your results to test rail, to create your test cases, et cetera. So this is a, a pretty straightforward way of doing things and of supporting a, a large community of customers. And without further ado, let's go straight into the demonstration. Uh, I apologize for some, for a little background noise, but please bear with me on this. So I'll start the demo now, just in a second. Okay, so what you're seeing here is VS Code. This is the IDE I'm going to use for this demo. And there's a couple of sample files here, which are JUnit reports and some scripts to, to, to import these reports to TestRail. But first things first, let's learn how to install the TestRail CLI. And to do that, let's open a new terminal. And first you need to verify that you have Python installed. So to do that, just write Python version and it should output your version. I have 3.10.5. Uh, to use the TestRail CLI, we recommend 3.10 and above. So if you have that, you should be good. Then you can also check you have the Python package installer. So just do pip version and it also outputs the version. And now we can actually install the, the CLI to do so. Just write pip install trcli, which is the name of the package. And there it goes. It's installing and it's done. 
and to check the install was successful just write trcli and execute that and it outputs the version of the cli and you're good to go in order to start using the test rail cli to import test results you must first make two configurations on your test rail instance to do so let's go to the administration page on the top right First, let's enable the test rail API. That's as simple as navigating to site settings, API, and checking enable API. Then save settings and that's done. Second and last, we need to create a custom case field. To do so, let's navigate to customizations and we land immediately on the case field section. Let's click add field to add a new one. Here, the only conditions is that the system name is automation ID and the type is string. You can label it as you wish. Here, for consistency, we're labeling it automation ID. You also need to select which projects it applies to. So here, I'll just select all projects and hit OK and add field. And that's it. You can now start using the test rail CLI. Now let's dig into an actual JUnit XML file. So we have this sample right here, which I'm going to open. And what is this? This is a very simple XML file. The schema is very simple. It's composed by elements of, of type test suit. Then there's properties. Inside properties, there's property, uh, which can be multiple uh, and where you can set your metadata. Uh, then inside test suit you can have other test suit elements and inside that you can have test case elements here you can see that we have three test case elements test case elements have attributes such as class name and name which make them uh, sort of unique if you join them and this is what we actually use to to be able to map test cases from your JUnit reports to um, to cases on test rail uh, so that's why we set up that automation ID. The automation ID will always be your class name dot and then your test name here. Uh, so this is how we map the test to test rail. Uh, then inside test case elements, you can have failure elements or skip elements. Failure means that your test uh, simply failed and these have attributes like the message. The message here just gives you information about why the test failed. And then you can also have more properties. All these elements are mapped into, into test rail entities. That's all you need to know here. So without further ado, let's just import these test cases and test results straight into your test rail instance. Um, for this, I have already prepared a script file here. This, this script file is, is just, a, although it's in multiple lines, this could be written as a, a one-liner. Uh, so this is just us calling the, the test rail CLI and then sending a bunch of options. Uh, this is the minimum required set of options. So you have your test rail instance here, uh, your user email, your user password, then the project name. Then you, you send in the, the actual command, which is parse JUnit. Uh, you, you send in the, the title of your test run and the, the file you want to parse. So here we're going to use the, the JUnit report critical file. So I'll just immediately run this, upload results, and there it goes. It checks the project and it just found that there are some, some sections that are not on test rail. So it asks you if you want to automatically create this. Actually here we're going to say no. And what I'm going to do is add the Y option here instead. I uh, just want to show you this because it's important if you're running on a CI tool and you don't want to any prompts, uh, you just want to, to run this and accept everything. Uh, then you can re-execute the script and the prompts will no longer appear. And there you go. It added three test cases and results for the three test cases. And now if we go back to our test rail instance and we refresh the test cases page, we can see that the three test cases were created. Uh, and if you notice here, there's the automation ID composed by the class name 
and then the dot and the name of the test. This is what the CLI will always use to map the tests uh, when it's trying to know if it should create a new test or just update the existing test or use it for the, the test run. Uh, and if we come to the test results and uh, the test runs and results page, we can see our test run here. It's, it's called automated test run as we as we specified and inside of it you can see the results for the three test cases and if you come to the fail test case you can see that the the message on the on the failure was the message that was on the report so yeah this is how the the cli maps the the elements from the the junit report to test rail now coming back here just to show you that it actually works we're going to run this command one more time and this time it just added the results so it found the the test cases and added the test results so cases the cases are the same and there's a new run here and this run contains the the same cases so there's no duplication of test cases here so this was the simplest possible example. Now let's try using some other cool features. Uh, one thing I like in all my projects is to keep things tidy and organized. And to do so, we can use configuration files. These are YAML files that make everything more readable and organized uh, and that the, the test rail CLI can read. So for instance, imagine that you have a test automation project where you run your critical tests and high priority tests in different stages and you want to import the, the results back to test rail afterwards uh, to to make everything more organized you can separate the, the the arguments for each using configuration files so let, let's look at the configuration files i created here i created this config critical yaml and this config high yaml uh, which relate directly to the critical report and the high report here um, so if we open critical the critical configuration what we can see here is that it will have the the same common uh, configuration for the test rail instance and project it's the same project the same credentials but then we want some different uh, some different arguments here for the title for example so you can more easily identify it on test rail so we have the, the critical here on on the title we can say that the file is the junit report critical file and then you can also specify some case fields so that when test cases are automatically created they have some, some of the fields uh, with, with your desired values. So for instance you can say the custom automation type is uh, the, the ID is 2. This means it's a robot framework test. You can say the priority ID is 4 so it's for a critical test and the type ID is 3 which is automated and the generated cases will have these properties filled in. And then for the for the high priority tests, you just change this here. So here is high priority. The report is the JUnit report high XML. And then he, over here, the only thing that changes is the priority ID, which will be for high priority. So then how do you specify which config you want to use? So I have this script here and like you can see here all you need to do is pass the c option and select the configuration and then just send in the the parse j unit command and it will use all the arguments from this configuration over here so this is for the critical run uh, let's let's execute this and see if everything goes according to plan so here we go and it's adding the test cases adding the results and it's done and now let's go back to our test rail instance i previously deleted the the tests we had already created so these are our new tests and like you can see uh, the priority is critical as we specify the type is automated as well uh, and if we open this here we can see that the automation type is robot framework so all the case fields are here and then if we go to the test runs you'll be able to see that the critical test run was created here and yeah everything went according to, to plan 
So if we now go back and instead of critical, we run this for high priority. And now let's run this again. And it's creating all the test cases, adding the results, and it's done. Back to our test rail instances and our test cases. You can see that it added all the other tests here. And if we just close this here, we can see that these are the high priority test cases. Uh, so this is the only different here. The, the only difference here. And if you go to the test run, you see your high priority test run here, where all the tests pass. Finally, let's see how you can use the test rail CLI within your CI system. So here I'm using Jenkins, which is a very popular tool used for CI. And I have already configured my project, my UI automated test, which is a robot framework project. And let's look into the configuration. So configuration wise, what it does is it fetches my, my repository where the test code lives. And then I have my my execution script. So this is just a bunch of configuration, setting paths, aliases, and then this is where you would install the test project and execute the project. Uh, so until here, this is what you would have without using the test rail CLI. But then we, you can add just two lines to actually upload the results. So you just install the test rail CLI and then use this uh, align uh, sort of like similar to this to actually upload the results. So let me break this down for you. This is just calling the test rail CLI, passing the yes option. So every comment prompt is automatically accepted. Then a configuration file, which is very similar to the ones we already saw. Uh, then the username. And if you notice, I'm not passing the, um, the password here because passwords are sensitive information. So what I'm doing is using an environment variable for that. Uh, so this is another feature uh, available on the test rail CLI. So what I do is I have uh, my, my password on the credentials manager in Jenkins and I set it with this name, with this pattern. So any environment variable that starts with tr underscore CLI underscore will be read as, a, as a, an option as well. So the option name is password. So we have our credentials, then parse JUnit. Uh, and then what I would do as well uh, is add the, the CI build URL on the run description. So it's easier to navigate back to, the, to your CI system uh, and check the, the actual report, uh, check logs for, for errors, etc. And, and then I, I would just exit with the robot exit code to either pass the build or fail the build. This, this exit code is set here. And let's save this. And let's try to build it and see what happens. So it should be starting in, in a couple of seconds. Here it is. It's running and let's check the console output. And OK, it finished as a failure status. And if we go up here, we can see that, okay, actually one test failed. So it's just the, the expected behavior. And we can also see that the, the CLI tool did its job and it added the test cases, added the results. So now we can go into test rail and see everything there. So let's do that. So here we are on the test res runs and results. If I refresh the page, here is my automated test result from CI. And if I open it, I can see that I have my test results over here and I have my CI build link over here. So if I click here, I can navigate back to the CI tool where I can further debug my, my failed tests. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a very useful workflow that you could easily implement using just a CI tool with a couple of, of parameters like I've just shown you. Okay, so that was the demo. So let me come back to my actual slides here. So here we go. And hang on just a minute. Okay, so what I have what I also have here are a couple of useful resources 
So things such as the, um, the repository for the CLI, the, the blog post we did announcing the CLI tool, which has a couple of examples there, the actual documentation for the CLI, and also how to integrate with the JUnit 5 and Unit and Robot framework. We are planning on doing more articles about different frameworks, uh, like the ones you always suggest, such as Cypress, Playwright, etc., PyTest as well. Uh, so yeah, that's all planned out, but this is what we have so far. So yeah, let's open up Q&A. So let me grab the Q&A panel here and start answering your questions. Okay, so instead of API data provider that manually handle hand code bodies, will Burak provide an open API spec? Well, this is something that is not yet uh, in stone, but there is a possibility that this happens. Matt will give more, more will provide more information. Uh, does test uh, CLI support Cypress with Cucumber? Well, we do support Cypress. I already have a test project set up with that. If you use the Mocha framework uh, as a as a the back office for Cypress, then you should be able to create a JUnit report, and from the JUnit report you can then uh, say that the CLI, yes, it supports JUnit report. So if you can generate one, and I assume that even if you use Cucumber, then you can also generate sort of a JUnit report. So yeah, will there be future CLI functionality for other API endpoints like milestones? Well, there's a couple of cool features such as milestones that we could support. We don't yet have like a sort of a roadmap for this, but this could come in the future, yes. Then, is there a way to report my Cypress test run from Bitbucket pipeline to test rail as a test run? Well, uh, so the Bitbucket pipeline works as any other pipeline, such as the one I just showed you on Jenkins. So the answer is yes. So you just need to actually install the CLI there and execute the command there, and you should be good. Just know that you need to have Python installed beforehand. So can we leverage Surefire reports? So Surefire reports, uh, I believe Surefire, uh, actually the, the project we have with JUnit 5, it uses J, uh, Surefire and and yeah, the, the Surefire plugin also, also creates uh, JUnit reports, so you should be good using Surefire. Then can we upload our reports directly to TestRail when we run builds on the Circle CI runner? Well, I'm not sure about our reports. I would have to dig a bit further into it. But like we've been mentioning, all we need is a JUnit report. If you have a JUnit report, then you can report your results to TestRail. So if, uh, if your framework allows you to create that report, you should be good. One other thing, just real, real quick to jump in, Diego, I know uh, right. some folks have been asking uh, uh, questions about which reports are supported. Um, one thing to note too, is you might look into um, a converter. I know and there's a number of frameworks that give you the ability to convert an existing report into a JUnit style XML, that would also be supported. It's an extra step, definitely not uh, not the best case scenario, um, but that also gives the further extension. If, you, if you're using a framework, um, just double check to make sure if there is an existing JUnit uh, report style converter. I mean, that's, that's why we started with JUnit style reports, right, Diego? Just because there's so much support for that in the automation space already. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I can give an example. So for instance, for NUnit, uh, the NUnit team provides an XLT file, which converts their format directly to JUnit. And you could use that and create your own custom uh, translator uh, for, well, any sort of uh, XML-based reports to convert it to JUnit. So yeah, it's an extra step. It's a bit more effort, but in the end, it could work. Cool, thanks. Uh, okay, cool. So. Test cases generated automatically are including test steps and or any other detail or just title matching the class name or test title. Uh, so it's just the class name and test title, but then you can also use the case fields. 
uh, option, so you can add some more information to it. As of now, we don't support test steps or, or any similar thing, but well, that's something we can also see as a suggestion and think about. I'm trying to link an existing test run or test case to a specific ticket or bug in Jira, but I am able to see the option only to create new test case, create new test run and map to bug, but not to add existing case or runs. Please help me resolve this problem. I think this is not exactly directed to the test rail CLI. Uh, there is a, th there's a good question here though. I mean, uh, yeah, you're right, Diogo. I think, um... I think we can help answer this question um, after the webinar as well. And if you want to feel free to reach out to our support team, if you're ever running into any issues um, that you can contact them at contact at gurak.com and we can help with that kind of thing too. But I think there's actually an interesting question here, which is um, how do I link results from automation that I'm uploading through this test row CLI. We're talking about being able to just upload a test automation result. So what if one of that, what if one of those automation results fails and I need to link that to a bug in JIRA or something like that? And actually the answer to that question is the same as the answer to your question. Uh, uh, the person that submitted this, this question, which I think is great. Um, I think what you're talking about here is to create a new test case or create a new test run from the Jira app inside Jira, which is great. That's helpful if you're starting in Jira. Maybe you've got a requirement or a user story in Jira and you want to have test coverage for it. So you want to create that test case in uh, test rail, or maybe you want to actually start running some tests against a particular specification requirement from Jira. That's a good opportunity to click that uh, create a test run button. But actually, the way I would link a, uh, a bug in JIRA to a test result, I would do that from the test rail side. And you can do that with test results that you upload from the test rail CLI, right, Diogo? Uh, yeah, you can do that. The, the only thing here is that, well, you can reference the uh, stories in, uh, in test cases, but we don't offer any any functionality where you could do it, it case by case uh, and even for results, what you can do to create a new bug is actually go into the result and report the bug directly from the result there. So yeah. that, that would so be my advice. At this stage, the CLI won't automatically create the defect. And part of the reason that we haven't done that is because a lot of times what we've seen is most teams want to review a test result before they actually go and create the defect. So what your workflow might be is, um, let's say, here, I'll just share screen for a second. Oh, actually, Diogo, would you mind pausing sharing? I'm just gonna oh. share a, a quick okay. example. Sure. Let me just stop it here. If it'll work. I know we're, we're kind of doing it live here, but just because this is a great question. Yeah. Um, so let's yeah, say- You're totally right. Usually you want to actually uh, check uh, the, the result before reporting a bug because you, we all know that the automation always uh, comes with a little bit of flakiness. Um, so yeah, and you could assign that result to someone to actually review it before submitting the, the bug report. But yeah, go ahead, Matt. Show us how to that's, do it. No, that's perfect. Well, I, I'm just showing. So in this case, what we're looking at is a test run in an example test run app. Now, this test run wasn't generated by the CLI. Um, but it's going to look pretty similar to a test run generated by the CLI. That's what's so cool about the CLI to me is that it's going to be able to take the JUnit style results from whatever platform you're running these the, your automated tests in, and it's going to create a test run for you in test rail that looks the same way as the rest of your runs that you might be running manually, and it's going to be able to be reported on the same way. So then what you would do, you upload the result to test rail through the CLI, now let's go in here and review the results. It looks like, okay, let's say one of the tests in the automation suite failed. You could do the same thing that we did here where you might say, okay, it looks like it failed in the automation. And maybe what you're gonna do is actually update your test results statuses. Maybe you want to create a special status for failed dash automation, or maybe review dash failed automation, something that, that marks that it was an automation test that failed. You want to review that. 
now you're going to say, yep, actually, we did find a bug here. And what you're going to do is just link that test result to an ID. If you already created the defect in JIRA, um, you could put the defect ID, just the JIRA ID, the issue ID, like uh, uh, I think like something like this, right? Like if that's the ID yeah. of the issue that you already created in JIRA, great. Otherwise, if you've set up the push defect functionality between Testrel and JIRA, you can push a defect report right from Testrail. And this is going to work the same way as it always says. You're going to push it from Testrail. It'll show up in your linked JIRA board. And it's going to be the same workflow. That way you get a chance to review it, make sure, okay, yes, this was really a failed test. That way the developers or the development team or product team is working on issues that are known to be issues. It's not just an issue with the automation. Um, and also that gives you that traceability. That shows that you linked the uh, bug from Jira to the test result in test rail. You can track that as a defect in test rail um, against this particular test run, or, or if you had it linked up into a milestone, you're working on a test cycle, you've got a particular milestone you're trying to hit. You can see how many linked defects that you've had within that milestone. So because the test rail CLI actually reports all of this information to test rail in the same format as the rest of your testing, it means that you have access to all the same kind of features here to link between your testing uh, defects that need to be remediated before the release, reporting about the, the quality of this release so far, et cetera. So um, yeah, I hope that helps answer the question. We've got some documentation about Jira and also uh, there's a webinar tomorrow, a more general product demo webinar. So if you wanted a follow-up question just about the Jira integration part, um, feel free to join that webinar. We'll put a link in the chat to that as well. But um, yeah, sorry, uh, back to you, Diogo. Yeah, okay, no, thanks. Thanks for the information, Matt. Yeah, that's a very useful sort of workflow for, for automation related stuff. Um, okay, so let me get my, my screen back up. And okay, so this one is done and if you have a demo with Cypress, that would be awesome. Well, thank you. We'll have one pretty soon. Uh, I mean, not a demo, but an article where we explain how to use Cypress with the test rail CLI. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, then Jeremy has, well, a very complex sort of use case, I would say. Uh, actually, not that complex, but uh, but yeah, keeping uh, keeping uh, your your source code repository as a source of truth. Uh, you could do that right now. We don't support uh, adding that much information uh, through the test rail CLI. So yeah, the the, answer, the the short answer right now is not really. Matt will probably be giving you some more insights on that. Uh, so well, I'll, I was yeah. I was just gonna say that's a really cool way of of really trying to um, keep everything up in sync. But yeah, uh, to Diogo's point, right now. The CLI generates test cases in test rail if you don't have a test case in test rail already. But I think, Diogo, it only supports a couple of fields in yeah, test rail. Right. It wouldn't, go ahead. Yeah, right now it's, it's mostly just the title and not much more than that. The, the rest you'll have to specify as case fields. Uh, and you also need a, a, a run report. So you can actually do this if you don't have a, a report. So yeah, this, this is something we might think of in the future, but as of now, we, we don't have support for that sort of functionality. Yeah, no, that's a good point, Jeremy. I mean, that's part of why we're, that we, part of the reason we introduced the CLI is because a lot of teams are looking for that same sort of source of truth for their test cases. And um, as more and more teams are automating, they're looking to actually introduce the test cases themselves as artifacts in um, the SDLC, which I totally, uh, I totally agree with. And I, I think you guys are on the leading edge of that. And, and that's where the rest of the industry is gonna go. Um, a lot of teams will treat test cases written in test rail as those artifacts. Um, and that's part of why this tool is so valuable is if you like, one of the things that's really important too is you're starting to get more into automation is, um, the 
you don't want to automate everything. Uh, that's the truism. Everybody in this call knows that. You want to be smart about what you're automating. And one of the things that Test World does is gives you the ability in the test case repository to filter and sort test cases and rank them. You can use uh, a custom field. It's something that we show pretty often in our demos is using a custom field um, or a custom filter to identify good candidates for test automation. And so if you end up going that way, if you start in test rail where you're scripting out a test case and then you're going to go to your automation and write it in your automation, then um, you can just specify the automation ID on your test case in test rail. That will then give you the ability, as long as the automation ID in test rail matches the way that you've set up your test name and the namespace in your automation suite, then your automation suite is going to link up with that test case in test rail. The, the trick is for teams that are still doing some kind of manual testing, exploratory testing, smoke testing, uh, user acceptance testing, it's really hard and kind of time consuming to spec those in a source code file um, or, or just not valuable. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing some kind of BDD style testing, then yeah, then you can make that uh, something that you're actually writing out in a spec in a source code file. And actually test rail is about to launch some BDD feature functionality where you'll be able to download uh, test cases from your test rail repository that are written in the Gherkin script to a, uh, a feature file that you could use uh, running BDD or vice versa. If you write your test cases in that Gherkin style, you'll be able to import them as test cases into test rail. Um, but what we found with most teams is they end up doing some kind of testing that they need to track that just can't be written as uh, as a code file. And so that's why, I mean, uh, from our perspective, the test cases in test rail should be the artifact. And it's about taking uh, the test code that you're automating or the Gherkin style scripts that you're maybe adding as a source code file and integrating those into test rail, either through the CLI or the other thing I was going to mention is the test rail API which allows you to edit a lot of the fields on test cases directly through the API. That's something that um, isn't available in a lot of other test management tools, but you can do a lot of editing of the actual test cases in test rail through the API um, so that test rail becomes your source of truth for anything that you're testing, whether you're a human is testing it and on a real device, um, a business analyst is testing it, on a real device or an automation engineer is scripting something and running it as part of an automated CICD pipeline. Yeah, so the, the CLI is right now is used just to parse actual test results and report those back. The sort of test case generation is an extra, let's call it that. Uh, and you can also still use the API. The API is still there. We abstract this part of the results, but you can still use the API and do everything you need uh, by, by just connecting to it. So we are running a, a bit short on time here, but let me try to answer a couple more questions here. So can this be installed via Homebrew on macOS? Well, not via Homebrew, but you can install Python and pip and then install this through pip. So that would be the way we recommend you to do it. Then a couple of questions here all about Java. So, uh, the, the, the thing here is you, you don't need to, to care about your framework or your programming language because the CLI is a, is a common line tool. It's framework agnostic, programming language agnostic. So all you need here is a JUnit report. That's all you need to know. If you have a JUnit report, then you can use the test rail CLI. That, so if you have a framework that can generate that, you're all good. So this checks a couple of questions here. Let me just check them off. So Java, Java, Java. And yeah, there's also something about IntelliJ IDEA here. It's also not about the IDE again. It's about producing a JUnit style report file. So does the JUnit report XML support multiple test suits? Uh, we well, actually, when we create the test cases, uh, we create them under one suit uh, and then under one section. But you can have multiple test suits on on your XML on your XML report. Uh, also, you can merge multiple XML reports into one, which will have multiple suits. But that will be useful mostly for the for mapping for that automation ID. 
and not actually reflect that structure on the on the sections on test rail. And how is the test mapped to test rail? It's just some annotation. Well, like we mentioned during the the present the the demo, uh, there is that automation ID I was just mentioning as well right now, and that's how we do it. It's the class name dot name that is on the report that is mapped to the automation ID, and that's how uh, the CLI will always know which which test is which. So. Couple more about Cypress. I think we already replied to this one. Yes, yeah, Cypress can be used if you can use, for instance, Mock as a as a back office to generate a JUnit report. Can we manually override the test results after the results are exported to Test Rail? Yes, Matt just showed you that just a while back. So yes, you can do that. You can do anything you would do to a normal uh, test result on on Test Rail. So yeah, that's also a yes for you. Can CLI be used with WebDriver IO? Once again, it's not about the framework, it's about the report. So if you can generate a JUnit report using WebDriver IO, which I can't really tell you right now, but we might do an article on that uh, if we have the buffer for that in, in a couple of, of days. So, so yeah, uh, this can be a yes or a no. Can we map already created test run? Yes, you can also uh, pass in the, the run ID option. So you will update a test, an existing test run instead of creating a new one. So yeah, you can also do that. Is it possible to reuse TR IDs? Uh, so uh, this is not about test rail case IDs or anything. It's about that mapping with the automation ID which maps once again to the test, to the class name and the name of the test. So here, I can't really give you an answer on this one. Um, I, I just wanted to understand that it's about the, the automation ID, not, not really a case ID or any sort of, of internal uh, test rail ID. So Matt, we're running a little short on time here and there's like a lot more questions to go. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yeah, I was excited to answer all these, but perhaps we would leave this and reply to them later. Yeah, I think we could do that. Um, this is really, this is great. I'm so excited to see how, how yeah. many people are excited for the, the CLI tool. I think let's do that. Let's take, uh, let's take this offline. And what we'll do, folks, um, we will automatically send, you'll automatically receive an email to this um, with a link to this recording in the next 24 to 48 hours, I think it's usually 24 hours after the webinar ends. If we can answer these questions in time, what we'll do, we'll just uh, give you a link to a Google doc and we'll consolidate some of the questions because these are some good ones. That way we can put the, the questions in writing and send those to you. If we have time to get them out before that, that auto email goes out tomorrow, we'll do that. Um, otherwise we will, um, We'll send you a follow-up email separately sometime next week. Uh, but this is great. The only other thing I wanted to mention, it, and you kind of mentioned it earlier, Diogo, but um, one of the things we're super excited about, the fact that the CLI tool is open source means that for a lot of the a lot of the questions you're asking about other tools that are supporting it or other add-on features, um, we would love to see those as feature requests on the GitHub project, um, which you can find in the docs article, I think, um, Let's see if we can link it here to Sanjeev, if you're able to link yeah. the GitHub project here. Also on, um, the, on the slides, we'll be sharing yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah, exactly, and it'll be in the follow-up email too. If you're running into any issues, um, throw, those, throw those questions into, the, um, into a GitHub issue on the open source project. And then we'll be able to take a look at that. You may even be able to submit your own pull request to, to fix yeah. the issue. If not, Diogo's looking at it. So we're hoping that with all the smart people that are in the test world community, we can just make this thing super, super helpful for anybody that needs to use it. So um, yeah, so, so look out for the links to the documentation, um, the link to the open source repo uh, where you could submit a bug if you find it with the CLI or a feature request, things like that, uh, and even contribute to the CLI. Um, we'll send those links in that follow-up email um, that'll come to you in the next 24 hours. But Diogo, thanks so much. This was awesome. Thanks everybody for staying on so long. 
have a great rest of your week. This is, I'm just showing the, oh, yeah. the, actual, the actual project here. So yeah, this is the project Matt was just mentioning. It's public on, on GitHub. And if you want to make any requests, just go to issues and then new issue. And you can either report a bug. There's a bug report template here and the feature improvement template as well. Just fill that out and we'll triage it and look into it see what we can do. Also, if you want to contribute, you can also just state there that, hey, I, I'm comfortable co contributing and I want to do something about this. And well, let's all make this CLI a better tool for everyone.